Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of my neutral eyeshadow palettes. I've been putting this one off for a while, but if you want to see what comes out on top, then just keep watching. Hi guys, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. Today's video is extremely exciting because it is in collaboration with my friend Britt Clark. If you don't know Britt, you are missing out. Humble opinion, she has the best lives on YouTube. I'm not a huge live watcher. I like to multitask and watch lives, but one live that I will watch is Britt's all the time. I will sit down, just watch her lives. She is so funny. She covers all of the new makeup. I love her taste in makeup. She always is very experimental with the colors that she chooses as well. Just a fabulous channel. She will make you laugh. So please go check out her video. When we came up with the idea, I think it was Britt's idea, but <laughs> when we decided on this idea and I actually sat down and pulled out all of my neutral palettes, I really realized how many different interpretations of neutral there are. I have had to message Brit and be like, are we like including cool tone neutrals, warm tone neutrals, or neutral neutrals, neutral palettes with pops of color? Like there's a lot to work through and it really stressed me out. So just <laughs> so you know, due to the sheer size of my collection, I narrowed it down to 30 neutral palettes that are still like relevant. And I stuck with the palettes that were more neutral neutral as opposed to cool tone palettes. Like for example, the Natasha Denona Glam. While that is a neutral palette it's a very cool palette and the Natasha Denona bronze well technically that is a neutral palette it is very very warm every single shade so I tried to pick palettes that either had a mixture of all of the tones or they stuck more so in the middle there wasn't one specific way that they leaned more towards because I do plan on eventually doing my favorite cool tone palettes my favorite warm tone palettes so I thought it would just really narrow things down to keep things kind of in the middle. Not only that, but I also chose palettes that were still relevant. I don't consider my Too Faced Chocolate Bar palettes to be very relevant. I haven't talked about them in a year on my channel. I haven't used them in a year. So I didn't include palettes like those. So these are only palettes that I've talked about, I would say in the last year or have used in the last year just things that I actually have valuable thoughts over because if I were to include every single neutral palette, I feel like after 30, the rankings just become kind of random. You just kind of place them, they lose their meaning. So I kept it at 30, which is still a lot, so I could at least give some more meaning to these rankings. So anyways, long intro, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna start off at number 30. This is probably my least favorite palette that I tried this year, unfortunately. And this is from Shantikai. This is the Walk for Giants Safari Collection Eye Trio. And a shadow just popped out. That's never happened before. And it's making... Wh why is this a thing now? In my last video for my haul video, something fell out. The Safari Eye Shadow Palette just fell out. Mm, I just... Yeah. That about sums it up for this palette pretty much. Ugh. Look at this mess now. Do you guys, this is just unnecessary. Why? <laughs> mm. Right, so let's talk about this. This palette right here that I can't even show you cost me $75, and now my fingernails look dirty. It's eyeshadow. $75, the shadow just broke. These shadows I think are pretty, they are usable. I have used this palette and I will continue to use this palette because I spent $75 on it. Mm -hmm. They're just very, very sheer shadows and they don't really look that nice on the eyelids. It's just a wash, but for three, shades, $75. It just wasn't worth it to me. Two shades now, I guess. <laughs> I'm really sad that that just happened because I spent a lot of money on that. But yeah, $75 for that. That is my least favorite neutral palette. It does have a range of like a bronze shade, a red shade, and a golden shade. So it does have a range there in the neutrals, but I just don't recommend it. <laughs> okay, let's move on to number 29. We have the Tati Beauty Textured Neutral Palette. Now... <sighs> Tati, I want her to come back. I want to see what else she got in store for her makeup brand. 
I didn't love this palette though. I love the idea. Now we have all ranges of different tones as far as neutrals go in here. So because this didn't lean swat one specific way, it did cover all of the neutral tones. I still covered it in this one. I hate the mattes in here. I feel like every time I try to do some type of detailed or intricate kind of look, something more than just popping a crease and a lid shade on, it's very, very hard to work with. I just don't understand. It's just a hard to work with palette. I have to keep blending and blending and blending to get the results that I would like. And I really love the glitters here. I really love the layout here and I can make this palette work absolutely. I just can't do anything really crazy like a cut crease or a halo eye or it gives me a tough time. By the way, you guys, I'm not doing swatches for these palettes. Normally in my rankings videos, I like to at least show you swatches, but quite frankly, <laughs> I don't have the time to do 30 palettes. So I'm gonna have to go without it today. And if I'm missing a palette, maybe don't make me feel bad by asking me where it's at. I just was stressed enough picking out these palettes. It's just not in this video. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to number 28. Now from this point on, the palettes that I'm speaking of, they're pretty good. So we have the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette. So this is just a really great range of all different types of neutrals. It's an all matte palette. And I do like this and I don't discourage anybody from picking this up. I think it's a very useful palette. However, I have a Vizzy Art palette that I'm going to talk about later on that's just 30 times better than this one. I feel like it's just not the best quality. It doesn't blend the best. It blends good enough, but I just know that there's better out there. So I'm not tempted to reach for this. So for me, it's just not one I'm super crazy about. It works. It's good. And if you like the brand, you like Mario, and you're looking for an all matte brown neutral palette, you will really like this. Number 27. Oh, you guys are going to be like, really key? I have a Tom Ford quad and I like this one. I do not dislike it at all, but this is De La Creme from Tom Ford. And I think it's a really great everyday work palette. It will look really good with my outfit right now. Not bad at all. The shimmers are really nice. The mattes are really nice. It's just not exciting for me. And neutrals aren't very exciting. I guess, but I'm a big neutral girl. And this one in particular, like I like a little bit more glimmer at least on the eyelid. And this is just very soft and subdued for me. So for me personally, it's not my favorite. I do think Tom Ford has better neutral quads to offer. Moving on to number 26. We have another quad and it is only $3. We have the e.l.f. Bite Size Eyeshadow in the shade Truffles. And this is absolutely stunning, you guys. The quality is quite amazing for only $3. This black is awesome. This is such a shimmery lid shade. I highly, highly recommend it. If this is a kind of color story you're interested in, you will be blown away by the quality. Is it the best quality in the world? No, but for $3 is the best $3 quality that you're gonna get. Number 25, we have The Warrior by Juvia's Place. I just love the packaging of this and the colors in here are quite incredible. Honestly, these are the kind of neutral tones that I love. So as far as the color store here, these are the neutral colors that I am going to grab for. Now my only hesitation with this is I just don't grab for it as much. I'm really not sure why. I think the shadows are a bit too creepy me so that they don't really wear well. They kind of all blend together. For example, I feel like oh, I know you guys are going to come for me, but I, they remind me a lot of Morphe shades in that they're almost too wet to wear. It just kind of combines all over the lid. Now, I did recently just purchase a few more shadows from Juvia's Place, so hopefully, I don't know, maybe it's better and I have a better experience, but I love these colors and I think it's really pretty, but as far as like layering shadows and doing intricate kind of looks, I don't grab for this for that reason. Number Number 24, we have a, another Tom Ford quad. Now this is Noir Foom. Now this is a color story that is a little bit more up my alley. I absolutely love this color story. I don't know why this is ranking so low. Just kind of looking at the other palettes that I have here. I just like them more than this one. Don't have anything bad to say about it. It's just not the most exciting for me, but it is a very easy one to grab for. So I do recommend this one. It's really nice. Number 20. 
23, we have a new palette. This is from Vizzy Art. This is the Praline palette, and here is what it looks like. I absolutely love the tones in here. This is an ideal tone for me. However, I will say I do wish that this had a little bit more depth. So when I wear this, I do feel the need to dig into another palette for just a warm chocolate brown. But other than that, I really love this one. Number 22 is a palette from the drugstore. This is the Nudes of New York by Maybelline, and this is quite an impressive drugstore palette. I'd honestly argue if we're talking from the actual drugstore, not just Ulta or something, this is the best palette that I've ever tried from the drugstore. I think the colors in here are very pigmented. They blend well. They aren't quite top, top, top notch quality, but this is from the drugstore. That is the price point that you paid for, but this is so, 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 so good. So if you're looking for a good neutral drugstore palette, highly recommend it. You will not regret this one. Moving on to number 21, we have my friend from Wayne Goss. This is the Imperial Topaz palette. Now this is the first palette that he came out with and I think it is absolutely stunning. Again, kind of an underwhelming release from him, but at the end of the day, it's a stunning everyday neutral palette and I really do enjoy the quality of this one. I think it blends really well. The celestial shade is honestly just incredible. So I really, really like this one. It's nothing to write home about as far as the color stories go, but at the end of the day, these are very easy colors to reach for, so I do really like this one. Number 20, I have a little mini baby from Natasha Denona. This is the mini nude palette, and I mean, looking at this, I kind of wish I had ranked it a little bit higher. Sorry, it got a little bit blurry there, but how stunning is this? This is one of Natasha's best mini glam palettes. I highly recommend it. It leans a touch, touch, touch warm, but pretty neutral for the most part. So if you're looking to try a good Natasha Denona formula for $25, a really nice price, highly recommend this one. Number 19 is from ColourPop. I have quite a few neutral palettes from ColourPop that I love. So this is the Going Coconuts. I feel like they really, really did a good job with this one. Now my colors are a little bit mixed up because I fell out one day and I didn't know where to put them. But the quality on here is really, really nice. The tones in here are beautiful. Again, if we're talking the kind of tones that I wanna reach for every day, it's going to be from this palette. You have a nice range in here as well. So I think this is a really well put together 9 p.m. palette and it's one of my favorites from ColourPop. Definitely their best. 9 p.m. palette in my humble opinion. Number 18 is from my girl Charlotte. We have the Exagger Eyes Quad and this is a really popular one. It's one of Charlotte Tilbury's most known and I'm just not as in love with it as everybody else's but it still is gorgeous for that overall ethereal glowy kind of eye look. So I do recommend this one. This is just kind of where it fell and it's a little bit peachy pinkier than it looks in the pan but it still is really stunning. Number 17, we have a ColourPop palette. This came out this year. This is the Mulan palette, and this is such good work from ColourPop. I love all of the different formulas that you get in here. Even if a couple of them are glitter, I, I love everything about this palette. I think it is a stunning palette. It's a great formula, and they played with some new formulas in this palette as well at the time, and I think they did a really good job with it. So I like neutral tones with extra glittery, shimmery formulas oiled kind of shimmers. So that's what this palette has for me that I really, really love. Number 16, we have another guy from ColourPop. This is California Love. I like this one a lot too. It's even less shades than in the Mulan palette. And I like this kind of warmer tone vibe here. The color stories are very different. Just take a look. I mean, maybe not very different. That's a bit too far, but I don't know. As far as just what I found myself reaching for between the Mulan and the California Love, I grabbed for the California Love more this year. I think it's a really nice one. Number 15, we have another Charlotte Tilbury quad. This is the Bella Sophia. This is an incredible quad. The only thing I don't love about it is I feel like the pop gets a little bit hard panned, but it is 
is stunning if you like the Charlotte Tilbury formula. This is one of the ones that I recommend the most. It's really stunning for kind of a deeper neutral eye with a bronze lid. Mm, it is stunning. Number 14, some of y'all are going to come for my life for this one. You're going to be personally offended, but it's going to be Tom Ford Coco Mirage. I just don't find myself reaching, whoops, reaching for this one quite as much. It is kind of your basic everyday neutral tones that you need. I just have so many neutrals that I don't grab for this one as much, but the quality in here is absolutely 100% spectacular. Highly recommend it, but you can't even pick it up anyways because it has been discontinued, but I know a lot of you guys are probably going to ask about where this one would fall, so I did want to share that with you guys. Number 13, I guess this was like the ColourPop section where it landed, but we have the Bare Necessities palette from ColourPop, so this came out in their big palette collection and it is so 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 pretty I love it I love the range of tones in here now are some of the shades a little bit duplicative of one another absolutely but it's ColourPop you don't pay a lot for it I liked the quality in here a lot and I just like the variety that I can get in here and I really like big palettes I know small palettes are very very trendy but this is a big palette that I really do enjoy number 12 we have have another one from Natasha Denona. This is a baby in mini glam. Now this one is slightly cooler than the mini nude that I talked about a few moments ago. I just like the color story of this better. The quality again is just as amazing and more cooler tone neutrals are typically what I reach for more. So I reach for this a lot and it's super duper cute. Number 11 we have another quad from Tom Ford and this is the classic nude dip and this is just stunning it pairs so good with the coco mirage that i just mentioned and i just love applying a wet brush onto my eyelid everywhere for just an all over glowy eye look it is stunning if you can get your hands on it i know it's very expensive but i do really really love this one and highly recommend it number 10 we have one from scott barnes this is the what does he call this natural palette so you guys i've been feeling a little bit icky about Scott Barnes lately but I can't deny this palette so you do have all types of different tones of neutrals here as you can see and I'm not gonna lie he got his formula down he does have a very very good eyeshadow formula and pretty good formulations for the rest of his line as well I just think his line is very overpriced for what it is but he's got a good formula and I really do love this eyeshadow palette. I think it's stunning. I think the tones in here are perfection. And recently there was a flash sale where you could get this for 50% off, which that's the price that it should be. But I mean, totally worth it. Such a good palette. Number nine, we have one from Busy Art. This is the neutral mattes here. So you do have a couple warm and cool pops in here, but for the most part, it leans right there in the middle. And this is a palette that I was talking about that was way better than the Mario that just made me not want to use the Mario. I love the Vizzy Art Matte formula. I think they have some of the best in the industry and there's a reason why these are made for pro makeup artists and they are known and well loved in the pro makeup artist world because they're just amazing. Okay, the packaging, nothing special. Is it expensive? Yeah, but they have some of the best maps. Like, you can't deny that. Number eight, we have another Vizzy Art palette. This is the uh, Sultry Muse. Match made in heaven right here. I love using the Sultry Muse with the neutral mattes. And this one has just some really glammed up gorgeous shades when you use them wet or mix them with a mixing medium. Again, not the most exciting, but just something that is so versatile and so useful. Number seven is probably my most used palette in my collection. This is the Soft Glam Palette from ABH. This is not mine because mine looks honestly disgusting. I'm embarrassed, so... I'm borrowing this palette, but this is truly a great everyday palette. It's one of my most used for a reason. You have pinky tones, you have the neutral basic crease shades that you need for any look. Just an essential palette, truly. Number six, this is one that came out this year. This is the Marc Jacobs Extravagance Eyeshadow Palette. I love this. If we're talking in terms of really glam neutral shades, it's the shimmers that do it for me. This is a stunning, 
stunning palettes. I like am looking at this shade and I want to put it all over my eyelid. I'm not going to. So good though. Number five. We're really climbing up there now. So this is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is one of my favorite quads from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Golden Goddess. I just absolutely am obsessed with the look that I get with this quad. It's nothing too deep. It's just an overall cooler-ish toned, glowy, glimmery kind of eye, and it's probably my most reached for Charlotte quad. So I always, always recommend this one. It's really nice. Number four. Now this one has a couple of pops, but for the most part, I do consider this to be neutral. This is the Dominique Cosmetics Latte Palette. I love, 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 love this palette. It's one of my favorites. I definitely don't talk about it enough. Just cover these two and <sighs> these shimmers. This shade right here is one of my all-time favorite eyeshadow shades in the whole entire world. I'm telling you, the mattes blend beautifully. She did something with this palette and she made it amazing. I don't think enough people talk about how great this palette is. I feel like she's come out with some other palettes that maybe weren't quite as good as this one, but I do have a deep love affair with this guy. Number three is a very, very new one. One. This is from Nabla Cosmetics. This is the side-by-side -side nude palette. They killed it with this palette. They really honestly did. So you have all different tones up in here and the quality is awesome. The mattes blend so well. I love the shimmer options that you can get here. This shade is so beautiful. I... Oh. <laughs> I gotta learn to treat my eyeshadows better. I fell in love with Nabla this year and I was so excited to get this palette because the Nabla formula and some great everyday neutral colors couldn't resist. All right, you guys, we're getting there, we're getting there. Number two is the one that I am wearing today. This is the Natasha Denona Biba palette and this is the ultimate luxury neutral palette if you ask me if you're into luxury makeup and you're into neutrals you have got to give this palette a try the quality is the best literally the colors blend themselves you don't have to do anything i am wearing freckle on my crease pasha as my outer corner color, Monroe all over my lid, and a little bit of shine just for a little bit of extra shine all over my lid. And I mean, obviously it's a boring look, but it's it's so flattering. And I think that you use neutral colors so much that it justifies paying this much for a palette because the quality is just so good and you're going to use these colors. It's been a really, really, really long time since I've grabbed for this palette because I've been wearing crazier looks lately, but I had to use it for today and did not disappoint. Time for my number one favorite palette. I can't believe this ended up being my number one favorite but truly an ultimate ultimate glam neutral palette. This is the Supreme Nudes from Artist Couture. It is a superior palette. It really is the best. I just feel like these tones are everything. Why are we blurry? Hold on. Yes, these tones are just everything. Neutral look. I want these colors. If I were to develop a neutral palette, it would pretty much look like this. Maybe a few more cooler tones thrown in here, but the quality impeccable, color choice impeccable. It really is my favorite neutral palette in my collection right now. All right, you guys, there we have it. Those are all 30 of my neutral palettes ranked. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I didn't get to hit every single neutral palette that I own, but I did my best, I promise you. Make sure you go check out Britt's channel. Now, she included a lot of neutral palettes that I do have that, that I did not include in this video, so if you feel like some were missing, you do need to go check out her video because she probably has it in there. So yeah, that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and go subscribe to Brit's channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.